So, hey guys, welcome to the channel Code Chef. If you want to learn competitive programming and get a good hold on DSA, this is the correct platform for you. Every week, there are several video editorials on the Code Chef contests problem as well as various videos which will enhance your skills in DSA as well as competitive programming. So, if you are new to the channel, then subscribe the channel and turn on the bell notification. Myself, Shirayu Jain, I am a Code Chef educator, and in the series of dynamic programming, we are solving the problem that is climbing the stairs. Okay, guys, so now let us discuss the first problem on the dynamic programming that is climbing the stairs, right? So, it is a very standard problem, and we are taking this problem to understand more concepts that we have studied in the part one that is, what is optimal substructure, overlapping sub problems, all of these things we'll see in this particular problem that how we are thinking. Uh, of dynamic programming and how we are applying and how we are coming to the solution, right? So let's start with the problem. So what is the problem statement? You are climbing a staircase, right? And it takes n steps to reach to the top, right? So it is taking n steps to reach to the top. Each time you can climb one or two steps, right? So how many how many steps we can climb at once? That is either one or two, right? In how many distinct ways? you can climb to the top. So first indication, the first thing that is not every time dynamic programming, but we can consider the first thing that a problem is dynamic is related to dynamic programming concept is that it shows that distinct ways, something related to ways, how many ways, how many ways are there to reach to this or something like that. It can be a problem of dynamic programming. So this, this is the first point of indication. Some PNC problems are also related to uh, distinct ways or counting a total ways, but somehow uh, you can relate whenever you solve, uh, start solving more and more problems, then you'll uh, analyze that it can come in dynamic programming problems as well. So it is a point, it is an indication that it can be a dynamic programming problem. Now let's look at the scenario from the wrong, right? So let's take the example. Here I am standing, right? Here I am standing and the value of n is 2 that I have two stairs here right I need to reach to top here so in how many ways I can reach it so I can climb one step or two step here so if I climb one step then I can reach to this point and then can I cl climb two steps no I only I can only climb one step because there is only one stair left right so I'll climb one stair so this is one possible way another way another way is i directly jump the two steps and reach to the top this is the second possible way is there any other way no there cannot be any another way right because we have to stop here i am reaching at the top with only two possible ways so the answer would be two here two ways right let us move one step ahead now the value of n is equal to three now the value of n is equal to 3. So let's see how many possible ways are there. So the first possible way is I'll climb one step over here. I'll climb one step over here and reach at this position. Now can I climb two steps from this position? Yes, of course I can climb two steps as well and reach to the top. Right. And also I can climb one step and reach here. Right. So there are two possibilities which are arriving from this particular position. One is this and one is this right so how many ways are there from this position to reach to the top that is either i climb one step and then directly two steps and then uh, all the other ways i climb one step at time and then in three steps i'll reach it so there are two ways with this position right whenever whenever i start okay so this is one possible thing now what is the another possible way uh, for this what is the another possible way Another possible way is right from the starting only I'll climb two steps and then I'll reach the top at the third one, right? Because in the first step I'll reach the this position, right? And from this position I'm counting, okay, this is the possible way. But initially also I can climb two steps, right? So one possible way is at the initial level only I'll climb two steps and reach the top with one step. So one way is that. Any other way you can find? Mm, I guess no, right? So there are three possible ways in which we can climb to the top where n is equal to 3. So this will become more complex when n will be some big value and then you need to compute it. So you, you cannot compute it manually again and again and just try to draw. So we need to think of a smartest way in which we can count the total number of ways when uh, 
we should have from bottom to reach to the top right so this is what the problem statement looks like right this is the explanation of the problem statement i hope that you are clear with the problem statement what is the requirement of problem statement just don't think of dynamic programming as of now just try to understand what the problem is saying the essence of the problem we'll look at closely that how we can draw the conclusion that okay now we need to apply dynamic programming how we are applying it but as of now it is very important to understand the problem statement only so this is what the problem statement is now let's point out some of the observations which we can draw from the problem and let's build our solution from these observations let's start okay guys so now let us see what observations we can draw from this problem right so we have understood the problem statement now let us see what observations we can draw so whenever we start from the first floor right that is n equals to zero what are the possibilities that, that either we can take step one or either we can take two steps we have seen it right let us take an example of n equal to three right so n is equal to three so we can take either one step or we can take two steps so if we take one step then we'll reach n equals to one and if we take two steps we'll reach n equal to two right so these are two separate sub problems if we get the answer of these two sub problems then we'll add those answer and we'll form the answer for this right because the number of ways in which we can reach from n equal to one to the last that is n equal to three and the number of ways in which we can reach from n equal to two till the last that is n equal to three these total the total of these two will form the answer for n equal to zero right because from n equal to zero we can reach at these two places only right so some of the answers for these two right will be the answer for this one this is the one thing right so this is how we are breaking one problem into sub problems now for n equals to one what we can do we can take one step and reach n equal to two or we can take two steps and and, and we can reach n equal to three that is the final position right so this is the possibility so we are again breaking this problem into two sub problems right similarly for n equals to two also if we take one step then we'll reach n equal to three and if we take two steps that is not possible because we cannot extend the jump from the final level that is n equal to three right so that is that is not possible here right so this is the end point for this this is the end point it uh, it cannot go with steps two steps from this position it cannot go anywhere right also we could extend this as well from n equals to 2 it can again reach this can follow right this is, this is a small example for n equal to 5 n equal to 7 it will be larger one right so this is what observations which uh, we can derive okay guys so now let us think recursively and try to solve this particular problem so we have drawn various observations we have understood the requirement and what points we can draw from the problem statement now let us think how we can recursively solve this problem right so we have seen that for calculation for n equal to 3 we require the results for n equal to 2 and n equal to 1 right so we are drawing a general conclusion over here that for any nth step we require the results for n minus 1 and n minus 2 why because we can just uh, go one and two steps right from the previous uh, from the previous stair i can jump to the final chair final stair or from the uh, second from the second last stair i can jump to the final step this is what we are thinking and if we get the optimal results at those two position then we can easily add those results to get the optimal result at the last position as well with the property of optimal substructure right we have seen now let us think let's think with this help of recursive tree that how we can solve for n we require the results for n minus 1 and n minus 2 right for n minus 1 also we require the results from n minus 2 and n minus 3 similarly 1 and 2 steps prior for n minus 2 results we require the results for n minus 3 and n minus 4 this is how we are recursively calling these solve functionalities to get the optimal results right but at the granular level we somehow require some of the results to be stored or calculated pre-calculated because they only will form the foundation of our whole dynamic programming problem and then they'll build the whole uh, approach at till the top right so let us see that whenever n is equal to 0 or n equals to 1 we know the answer and that the answer that we'll store is something that is very basic right we can easily calculate that let us say for n equals to 0 if the value of n is 0 then there is only one possible way it will only stay at that particular floor only it, it need not to go anywhere and similarly for n equals to 1 there is only a single possible way to jump one stair right 
they, he, he cannot jump two stairs at that position right so we know the basic results for 0 and 1 we obviously know for 2 and 3 as well but very basic results is for 0 and 1 and let's try to compute it further right let us say we want to calculate the result for n equals to 3 right we want to calculate the result for n equal to 3 so the dependency for 3 is 2 and 1 we must have the results for 2 and for 1 so for the base conditions we only stored these results for for the array for this array we have only stored these results the result of 2 is not there but for the calculation of 3 we require result of 2 as well as the result of 1 we need to have the values over here but as of now we don't have the value of 2 right there is no value here as of now let us assume right there is no value here so but we have the value of 1 so it says that okay i require these two results so first if we don't have the value then solve this particular sub problem and get the value right so now we'll solve this solve 2 solve 1 already have the value right for solve 2 we require the results from solve 1 and solve 0 so these two sub problems they already have the values right so it is very easy to calculate the value of solve 2 how we can get that is solve 1 is the value the answer for solve 1 is 1 the answer for solve 0 is 1 so we'll add these two things and now we get the value that is 2 we get the value that is 2 now it says that okay everything is sorted out for 3 only we require the values at these two positions so we'll simply get the answer that is adding these two values that is 2 and 1 and we'll get the answer for solve 3 as well right so this is a very minimal case i'm talking about here and this is very good example to understand how the things are working in the recursion as well right so the final answer is computed as 3 so you can easily uh, go through this particular chart type of structure and see how the recursion is working so if you see here that we are moving from the top this is the top uh, this is the top value for which we want to have the answer and we are moving till the bottom to get the answer and then after going to the granular level we are again computing the answer for the same so it is top down approach right and it has two iterations one is moving from top to down and the other one up right so this is a top down approach that we are uh, seeing here at right now right so this is how recursively we are solving this particular problem so we have seen various concepts right how we are able to get this is because we have the optimal answer at this two at solve two and solve one we have the optimal answer for this solve two and solve one which is computing the optimal answer for this solve three so this is the property optimal substructure that we have seen in the theory part as well the second important point is overlapping sub problems so we can also see here that solve n minus two is called two times right which will derive to the same result solve n minus 3 will also be deriving to the same result and somewhere solve n minus 4 will also be called if we uh, compute the whole tree right for bigger values of n right so this is how we can determine okay this is the overlapping sub problems is also there optimal substructure is also there then we should go with the dynamic programming approach right so this is how we are recursively thinking of it now the point is these so many repetitions are there how we can optimize it we need to store these results right this in this type of array we need to store this we will try to solve this with the help of recursion so we have maintained a solve functionality right and in that we are passing the number of stairs initially that how many stairs for which stair we not want to compute the result right so let's first focus on this so we are calling solve n minus 1 and solve n minus 2 that is obvious right and we are adding the optimal result for this solve n minus 1 and solve n minus 2 at this dp of nth position right why if n is greater than or equal to 2 because for 0 and 1 we have already computed the result this is what the base condition is if n is greater than or equal to 2 then only compute the stuff then only recursively call that otherwise don't why because somewhere we need to stop right so that is the base here and we have already computed the result of 0 and 1 now how we will know that okay this has the value or not uh, how we will know that okay if the value is pre-computed or not because we are storing at the nth position but we need to have a check also right that is only when it will not recursively call again and again and recursively compute again and again so here we'll maintain a check that if dp of n is not equal to zero right initially we have made all the values as zero right because the uh, zero is the thing which will not appear here right if you want you can take minus one as well right so if 
dp of n is not equal to 0 that means that there is some value which is already pre calculated and simply we will return that value in such cases all right at last what we will do we have computed the whole dp array so at last we will return the dp of n that is the last value for nth value which we need to find the total number of phase so this is how we will construct a dp solution with recursion and with top down approach uh, and with the optimization of overlapping sub problems right so this is also some in some cases it will be working but let's move to one of the uh, most optimized way and let's move one step ahead of this particular top down approach and let's try to solve it iteratively with the help of bottom up approach okay guys so now let us understand the iterative solution right how we can develop it so we require the answer for n minus 1 and n minus 2 what we are trying to do is we are moving from the top to the bottom again and then computing the results right what happens if we start from the bottom itself and compute the result till the nth position right so how we can do this is we know that the base answers will be these right these will be the base answers we know that right now from 2 we don't have the answers right in the recursion we are following up with the 3 and then we are coming to 2 and we don't find the answer then we will again call the answers for the 2 so in bottom up approach we will try to solve the answers for these values and reach to the top right so for and i equals to 2 i less than equal to n i plus plus right what we will do for dp of i we'll get the answer from the i minus 1 and i minus 2 right we'll get the answer from these i minus 1 and i minus 2th positions for the ith value and then we'll move forward right we'll move forward because the earlier answers we will already have it right we'll already have those earlier answer and simply at last we will return dp of n which will be the final answer that's how simple it is once we have the essence of the recursive solution once we follow the essence of the recursive solution then it is very easy to switch from the recursive solution to the iterative solution that's how simple it is right rather than moving uh, in two iterations uh, moving to the bottom again and then computing the results for the remaining things right we'll already start from we'll already start from the bottom and then move to the top right we'll compute all of the blocks from the bottom and then we'll start building our own structure that's how we can optimize this solution right so if we see for the n equals to 2 if we try to build this right let's see what answer we get we get the 2 if we have n equal to 3 over here then what answer we will get that is 3 right for n equal to 4 also if we want to see that what answer we should get that is 5 right so this is how we will construct the bottom up approach now it's the time for you to practice this problem just write down the code mention any doubts if you have in the comment section below so thank you for watching the video guys if you like the content then please do hit the like button you can follow our telegram channel for the latest updates regarding the video coming on to the channel you can always write your thoughts in the comment section below i'll see you